Good evening, I'm Byron Scott with a CTV News update. Maryland restaurants and bars are being put on notice. Establishments that fail to follow COVID-19 guidelines on social distancing and face coverings could be hit with fines and other penalties. Governor Larry Hogan says some restaurants are flagrantly violating the law and endangering public health. He's calling on local officials to step up enforcement of public health rules. More than 700 new coronavirus cases were reported in Maryland over the last 24 hours. Well, hundreds of schools are backing a lawsuit against the Trump administration rule that places new restrictions on foreign students. Patricia Vallone has more on that story. In the um, Washington, Maryland, D.C. area, there are more than 35,000 international students contributing over $2 billion to this region's economy. These foreign students are now subject to a new ruling that could potentially force them to leave the U.S. if their courses are held online. Maryland has joined a multi-state lawsuit against the new rule, and 200 universities are backing a legal challenge to the Trump administration's new restrictions. Most of these students pay full tuition, and this is going to obviously affect the bottom line. Um, how do you adjust for that? Well, um, we are still dealing with um, understanding how we would implement this uh, guidance because uh, they give us a very, very small window for implementation, 21 days by August 4th. We have to know, A, what our students' intentions are. Are they want, uh, going to stay at home or will they want to come back? And we have to do all those reporting create immigration documents and everything. And honestly, right now, I am not even, or, or I, I don't think many of us are even thinking about the financial impact of it. However, like you said, this is huge. But for the moment, higher education is focused on the impact to students. Students are expected to leave the country. They don't live out of suitcases. They have lives here. They have leases here. They have children in school systems. In some cases, there are pregnant students. Patricia Vallone, CTV News. The 200 plus schools have signed court briefs supporting Harvard MIT as they sue U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement in federal court in Boston. A bipartisan coalition of lawmakers, including Congressman Anthony Brown, has introduced legislation that would restore war powers to Congress. In 2001, following the September 11th attacks, Congress passed the authorization for use of military force. Brown says since then, three presidents have deployed service members into new countries without debate or a vote in Congress. H.R. 7500 would reassert Congress's constitutional role in the declaration of war. We haven't had a robust debate. I think many members of Congress want to have that debate, not because we want to go to war, um, but because we believe that it's con Congress's constitutional responsibility to make those decisions. Nearly three years after a statue of Supreme Court Justice Roger Taney was removed from the State House grounds in Annapolis, Maryland's congressional delegation wants a marble bust of Taney removed from the U.S. Capitol. It was Taney who wrote the 1857 Dred Scott decision, which ruled in part that blacks could not be American citizens and therefore had no rights, which the white man was bound to respect. The entire delegation supports Tawney's removal except Republican Andrew Harris. The delegation wants to replace Tawney with a bust of Thurgood Marshall, the first black Supreme Court justice. And the government carries out its first federal execution in 17 years. 47-year-old death row inmate Daniel Lee was put to death in a federal prison in Terre Haute, Indiana, in connection with the 1996 murder of a family of three. The execution by lethal injection moved forward hours after the U.S. Supreme Court rejected a last-minute legal challenge on a 5-4 to four vote. Lee, who was the first of three federal inmates scheduled to die this week, maintained his innocence until the end. He was pronounced dead at 8.07 a.m. An Upper Marlboro woman has been arrested in connection with the death of her seven-month-old child. Authorities were called to a home on June 17 for a welfare check and found the boy, Majesty Thompson, unresponsive. The boy died a short time later. The death ruled a homicide. Tonight's police say 34-year-old Shannon Thompson admits to suffocating the baby. She faces first and second degree murder charges. Well, the class of 2020 will finally get a chance to walk across the stage. The county school district will host diploma ceremonies from August 4th through the 7th. 
High school grads will enter the school auditoriums in groups of 15 to receive their diplomas. However, however, due to the pandemic, the graduates will be limited to two guests. Each person in attendance must wear a mask and temperature checks will be conducted prior to the event. Well, Prince George's CEO, Dr. Monica Golson will host a telephone town hall tomorrow, July 15th. The superintendent is expected to discuss the upcoming school year. The event will take place from 5.30 p.m. to 7. If you want to take part, you must register. For more information, visit pgcps.org. The deadline to get health coverage through a special enrollment period ends tomorrow. So far, some 53,000 Marylanders have signed up for health insurance during the special enrollment period that began in March. Health exchange officials announced the extra enrollment period after the governor declared a COVID-19 state of emergency. Again, the deadline is tomorrow. For more information on how to sign up, go to MarylandHealthConnection.gov. Well, here's an alarming statistic. A car is stolen every 40 minutes here in Maryland. Observing National Vehicle Theft Protection Month, state police are reminding you not to leave keys in your car. Also remember to close all windows and lock all doors. Officials say these simple steps can potentially prevent a theft. I wouldn't leave anything in your car, really. I mean, just, you know, I mean, we, we, we have busy lives, right? We're, we're getting in and out of our cars. We, you know, we're stopping home on the way home from work. We may have our laptop in the bag or, you know, anything, anything of value that, you know, is, you know, that thieves want to look for. You know, they're, they're going to go through and, you know, they're looking in the cars, but, you know, first and foremost, they're just making sure that the cars are unlocked. McDonald says if you see something suspicious, please contact police. Well, feeling stressed, overwhelmed, you can meditate through an online yoga class hosted by a shop in Hyattsville. CTV's Keisha Butts has that story. Like many businesses, Family Studio Love Yoga is getting creative by offering most of its classes online. Moving to a virtual platform due to the public health crisis, co-owner Asia Vienna Leak says she's noticed that membership has decreased and she's even had to cancel a youth program. With all these challenges, Leak wants you to know her studio is still open. Love Yoga is here. Even though we're virtual and we're not in the studio, we're here. We have our classes, workshops um, for those people who are interested in becoming yoga teachers. We're still running our yoga school, which is registered through Yoga Alliance. Um, so there are still ways to get involved in, you know, ultimately a yoga studio is just a place to come to the practice, but essentially you can practice anywhere. Leek says you can download the studios app to also exercise. For more information, visit love-yogastudio.com. This is Keisha Butts with CTV News. Back to you. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to this CTV Sports Report. We start tonight talking baseball. I'm out here at Prince George's Stadium, home of the Bowie Bay Sox and also home of the Baltimore Orioles taxi squad once the 2020 season begins. Now when they announced their initial 60-man pool, they only had 44 names on the list and Ryan Mountcastle was not among them. He has since been added to the roster and will find himself right here at Prince George's Stadium to begin the season. Yeah, they communicated with me, um, you know, I think right before all the names came out and said I was going to the alternate site. I mean, a uh, little upset, but uh, at the end of the day, they sent me down after spring to AAA, and that's what they said. They said, um, you know, most of the guys that they had already sent down are going to be going to that alternate site. Well, I had a, a good year in AAA last year. I thought he put himself on the map to to compete for a job uh, uh, this year. I think he's close. I think he just still needs some reps defensively. Um, you know, we've moved him around quite a bit, try to get him comfortable in left field. He looks a lot better. Um, I like the work that he's putting, has been putting out there um, and done a nice job. And so I think, uh, I think he's close. There's a lot that goes into the outfield. I mean, just getting better routes. That's all I was trying to do. And, you know, being able to put my head down and run and, you know, look up and be able to find the ball, stuff like that. As opposed to the infield, you know, when you get a pop fly in the infield, you got your eyes on it the whole time. But when you really got to, you know, put your head down and run, you got to, in the outfield, it's a little bit more tough. 
And we will have much more with the Baltimore Orioles as opening day is now under two weeks away. Moving on to basketball, the WNBA is getting set to start back up on July 25th. The Washington Mystics will take on the Indiana Fever. Now the defending WNBA champions have only had a couple of practices, but head coach Mike Tebow likes what he sees so far. We've gotten quite a bit done uh, for four days, so I'm happy uh, with where we are. Um, it's hard to tell, you know, our level of play a little bit because we're only playing against each other, but uh, we got a chance to go up and down more today, full court, so that was good. The biggest thing is, um, of course, we don't have our voices um, from previous years. Um, the biggest emphasis Coach has put on in practice has been teaching. Um, and I think everyone has done a great job with grasping um, the stuff that he's thrown at us. And um, we've definitely heard um, new voices this year, including mine, so a lot more. Um, it's good that we have Essence, who's a, a great veteran um, in the league. Um, she's, she's, she's been vocal. Um, and it's just, everyone has actually stepped up and been a lot more vocal than they have been in the previous years. It's been good. Obviously, it's only been a few practices, so um, we're still getting to know each other. Um, you know, there's a lot of sort of unforced turnovers just because we haven't played with each other and we don't know um, sort of the ins and outs of what each player likes. But um, we're getting there, of course. You know, we don't want to peak now. And, um, you know, we've got a few few weeks before the first game, and then obviously we want to peak in the playoffs. So we've got, we've got a ways to go. That's for sure. And that is your CTV Sports Report. And that wraps up CTV News for tonight. I'm Byron Scott. Join us tomorrow. You're looking at me in the future. Okay. Hi, Isaac. Hi. Wait a second. Do you know who I am? Julia. This is Jaina. It's the future. I just wanted to talk to you about what happened with those two girls. Oh, yeah. Do you remember... It was this girl that I was getting bullied by that one day at PE when they were like yelling at me. And then you just linked arms with me. I don't think you know how much like that helped me. Cause like I finally like knew that I had somebody. Because of you Isaac and what you did for me years ago, I grew up to be more independent and love myself and just be a little bit more confident. Oh, <laughs> I'm like a little tearing up right now. Just to see her in the future just blossom and look beautiful and that was really amazing. Here are your AARP top tips on caregiver preparedness during coronavirus. First, form a caregiving team. Create a list of people in your family and friend network who can help with caregiving tasks. Take an inventory of supplies in your loved one's home. Try to have a two-week supply of essential items. Make a list of the care recipient's medications and medical contacts. Be sure to have prescriptions on hand and ask the pharmacist for an extra 30-day supply. Make a plan to stay connected. To prevent social isolation, set up available technology to help loved ones stay connected and schedule regular chats. Finally, maintain your own self-care. Follow the Centers for Disease Control's guidelines for coronavirus safety and have a backup plan for care in case you become ill. For more caregiving tips during the coronavirus pandemic, go to aarp.org caregiving. I moved to Florida with literally pennies in my pocket and a prayer. I needed a new start. Dacian looks like a very typical three-year-old until you ask him, what's your name? How old are you? My son has a lot of behaviors that would show as being autistic. Most kids can tolerate a variety of foods, but unfortunately for Dacian, everything has to be organic and raw. I wasn't ashamed to go to the food pantries. It's expensive to eat healthy, and nutrition is very important to Dacian's health. The healthy organic food that we receive dramatically helped his social skills. Most people would say, she really doesn't have much of a life. But to me, I have everything right there next to me and my son. You are loved. You are valued. You are resilient.
You got this. You are there for them. We are here for you. Find free care guides mm -hmm. at aarp.org caregiving.